What's up, I'm Maverick with KC Turbos. We're here with Marcus Boyd here in Sisters, Oregon. We're gonna be installing stage two dual ball bearing KC38R, the Tiger Turbo. We should see some pretty huge improvements in spool up, boost, lower EGTs. So let's get to it. Before we install the new Tiger Turbo, um, this is my early 1999 7.3 power stroke. It's got a ZF6 manual on some 22s, but we are working with uh, a stock style Garrett Turbo with built internals. We got custom Y pipe and charge pipes that are going on there. We got a fuel regulator by Fuel Lab. We got a stage one cam in this, and then we're running 180, 30% single shot injectors. We got a stage two H pop and some other goodies in there. You know, this is just the daily driver, so this new turbo is gonna make it a lot more fun to daily drive. We'll just need an eight millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 11 millimeter deep socket, some panel poppers, and a torque wrench. Step one to install a KC38R turbo is disconnecting the negative terminals of the battery. Remove the engine cover if it is installed. You can unplug and label the green hose from the compressor intake duct. Remove the intake boot and the cold air intake. Loosen the two screws that secure the crankcase ventilator, then remove the CCV. Next, you'll unplug and label the red wastegate solenoid hose. Step four, you will remove the charge pipes to gain access to the turbo. The hose clamps on the charge pipes are 11 millimeter deep socket. Step five will be label and disconnect intake air heater element leads. Next, you'll label and disconnect intake air temperature sensor. After that, you will label and disconnect pressure hoses and wastegate solenoid. Be careful not to tear the boots. And when you're finished with that, you'll label and disconnect map sensor connector. Step six, loosen the clamps and remove the Y bridge. A good tip for loosening the Y bridge is you want a long extension. Be very careful when loosening these bolts. Make sure you get a hold of them so you don't lose them in the valley of the motor. Be careful when pulling out the Y bridge as it is a tight fit and you might break something if you pull too hard. Just be patient. And when you're finished with that, you can just set it off to the side. Step seven, remove and discard the compressor O-ring. All we gotta do now is disconnect the up pipes off from the turbo, the down pipe from the turbo, and swap out pedestals and get the turbo out, to put the new one in. For step eight, you will loosen the down pipe clamp and disconnect the down pipe from the hot side of the turbo. Leave the clamp on the down pipe as when reinstalling, that is the hardest thing to get back on. After you finish the down pipe clamp, disconnect the exhaust back pressure valve by sliding the retainer clip away from the exhaust back pressure valve actuator. Then detach the rod. One of the more trickier steps is loosening the up pipe clamp. It cannot be removed while turbo charger is installed. So moving on to step 11, just remove the two bolts that secure the turbo to the pedestal. And everyone's favorite step, removing that junky old turbo. Get that out of here. Step 13 is a optional step if you are not installing the new pedestal, but if you are, remove that junky old pedestal with four bolts and put that brand new one on. If you are reusing the old pedestal, you'll want to remove the old turbo EBPV assembly and then install it on the new turbo. Use anti-seize and about 15 to 18 foot-pounds of torque. This new pedestal will get rid of your EBPV. It'll give you more room so there'll be less messing around. New pedestal is 100% drop in. It'll eliminate leaks. Okay, so we just got the old pedestal and old turbo out. So as you see here, we got an absolute beautiful work of art. We got 
the KC38R Tiger Turbo Stage 2. This turbo is 100% drop-in ready. You can be completely stock and throw this turbo in. It has a 63 millimeter cold side 7x7 style compressor wheel and you got a 70 three millimeter gen two turbine wheel. It's got a four inch ported compressor housing. It's also got a very nice adjustable wastegate actuator for increased boost control. The awesome thing about the KC38R turbo is it is a dual ball bearing. In case you guys were wondering what the big difference in the dual ball bearing turbo is from KC turbos compared to a factory setup. For your next step, before you start installing the new turbo, make sure to check the turbo air inlet, exhaust inlet, and any other old components for problems or foreign material. Moving on to step 15, make sure you get the supplied pedestal o-ring seals seated into the pedestal. Gel the o-rings, it'll also prevent from cracking or ripping. When you compress that, it's got a little bit of lubricant to stretch. As I said before, moving on, you'll want to make sure that clamp is still on the up pipes when installing the new turbo. The greatest step of this whole process, you will install that beautiful looking turb ski. Remember to torque it down to 18 foot pounds of torque. If you're having troubles with fitting the pipes and the turbo in, loosen the pedestal bolts a little bit and you'll get a little bit more wiggle room. Then you can re-tighten the pedestal bolts down. If you do loosen the pedestal bolts for more wiggle room, it is very important you remember to tighten them back down make sure that those up pipes and down pipe inlets are seated down properly. As I said before, it is very important to keep that compressor o-ring around if you don't have a new one. If you do have a new one, install that, gel it up a little bit so it's easier to seat. As you see in the video, the Y-Bridge is a little bit different than the one we started out with as the one I had before wasn't the factory one, so we're going back to a factory one. But for your next step, you will position the new Y-Bridge in place and reinstall the hoses and tighten the hose clamps. For your next step, you will reinstall all the labeled electrical wires and plugs. Ensure that all the lines are connected and properly sealed. Some of the plugs have a little snap, so when you plug it in, make sure you listen for that little snap. Install supplied air inlet boot to the turbocharger, so your intake boot and the CCV assembly. Tighten down the clamps, connect the green line to the air inlet tube. You will reinstall the crankcase breather assembly. Reinstall your cold air intake. So we just finished getting the turbo on and everything else in. We are just buttoning it up. And so right now we are just about to do the oil change, especially with this new dual ball bearing. They're a little bit more sensitive and definitely smart to change into good oil and get rid of that bad oil. Getting closer to being done, you will reconnect the battery terminals. Once you start the truck, listen for any abnormal noises and look for any obvious leaks. You will sometimes, in most cases, you can hear the boost leak, but in some cases, you won't.
feels like there's a there's got to be a leak. All right, even though you get new parts for your truck, doesn't mean you won't have a leak. So it's always good to check because it'll save you months of headache as we put in uh, the new turbo. And we did come to find out we did have a boost leak. So with the boost leak detectors, you are supposed to put them straight onto the turbo. All right, so we figured out where the boost leak was. So it was actually in the Y bridge. It was on this bottom boot down here. I don't know if you can see that. Apologize of the truck being dirty, but it is on this boot that goes straight down uh, into the motor. Uh, the clamp just was not tight, so it was letting all the air out. So it was serving no purpose. Um, we got it fixed and now hopefully it rips. but it wasn't very much. And then all of a sudden I just look at the needle and used to just seeing it do this, it just went straight, boom, all the way to what it needs to. And as soon as I got into that higher RPM, it just cleaned up so much, like ran so clean. It's just boost. If I race this truck with my old turbo setup, to this truck with this turbo setup, it wouldn't be a question at all which one's better or faster. Like this one just outperforms it in every way possible. And that wasn't a stock turbo either. That And that goes to show like, it's a huge difference. <laughs> that's just, that's, I was at 30 pounds of boost there. I'm happy I chose the stage two over, you know, doing that male ego if you have to have the biggest thing possible of just saying stage three i'm happy i got pointed on the stage two especially for this setup because it just runs amazing this thing gets down and rowdy that is insane i have never heard that turbo out of the exhaust whistle that loud that is awesome <laughs> my old setup if I was doing constant pulls like we are right now and we've been at this for 30 minutes yeah my old setup was I would probably be sitting at like eight to nine hundred degrees on my EGTs and now we've been doing the constant pulls with this new turbo for about 30 minutes we haven't driven it easy once we've just been giggling the whole time and I'm sitting at 500 